Mm. Alrighty guys, we are in week six of the Take the Mask Off campaign. And this week is, we are talking about coping strategies. And the top, you know, the, the prompt would be, uh, what can help you not to mask? And I can only uh, really share, you know, what it's like in, in my world of not masking. Uh, and so, you know, this is not to be like everyone else's experience, uh, but you know, for me, my blog is very public. The information is out there. I don't try to hide at all that I am autistic. And that doesn't mean that, you know, when I go up and every person I meet, I'm shaking hands. Yeah, I'm autistic. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm autistic. Yeah, I'm autistic. Nice to meet you. You know, that's, oh, that's not what's happening. It actually doesn't come up very often. Although sometimes I might wear like a little autistic pride pin, like on a jacket or a backpack or a hat or a shirt or something. And then, you know, if they see it and they want to have a conversation, there's a conversation starter there, but, you know, it doesn't come up that often. Uh, but there are situations, and a lot of people mention that the places they mask the most are um, at work. Uh, so, you know, for example, my, my, my job I have now, I got after starting my blog. And, you know, it was known... Uh, before, during, and after the interview process as I was being hired that I was autistic. Um, and really that's just kind of been upfront and honest with like what do I need from my employer to be a successful employee and you know making sure I have those tools. And you know I, I think my request, you know my, my, my needs you know are pretty minimal. Uh, you know, if someone's giving me a bunch of directions, if they're verbal directions, uh, I need, you know, a computer or tools so I can quickly type up all the instructions so I make sure I don't forget or miss anything because I'm not going to hold it here. Very honest about that. Um, and also, you know, if, if, if that wouldn't work, you know, maybe I would need to tape record it and type it later, but I, I just type everything up. Or, you know, someone could send me an email with the directions in writing. That's great, too. You know, either way, I'm flexible with whatever um, works better for the person I'm working with. But, you know, I, there's, a, there's a give and take there. It's, but there's an understanding. Please don't give me a lot of instructions verbally if I don't have a place to type up all of the information. <laughs> um, and that's a really, really big one for me. I also use calendar tools and task lists, uh, but I use those on my own. Um, I guess there's time to use those things, but it's not really something I need to ask for. Uh, I work remote fairly often. Uh, and another thing that I had said in one of my previous videos is I often, you know, in what I'm when I was masking more, it would be my discomfort is something I mask. So I get cold very, very easily. So it might be just like acting like I'm not cold when I'm literally so miserable and can't think about anything else. Um, you know, or if I have getting a headache from just squinting in a bright light, just acting like everything's fine and I'm not like having a stabbing headache, you know, things like that. Um, so I don't, go into situations that would trigger that sort of discomfort anymore so I don't mask that sort of discomfort or I go to those situations far less often uh, so a lot of it is really like being upfront with my needs and what I need to be comfortable and not putting myself in situations that make me uncomfortable uh, and that also you know, another thing, and this is definitely a luxury, is surrounding myself with um, good supportive people who are, I don't need to mask around. Good supportive people I don't need to mask around. People who accept me for myself, like, and I can just be myself. Um, be, so I don't spend time with people who need me to be someone else anymore. Um, that takes too much energy and the people that need me to mask and be someone else and put on a face and put up a front and those are not my people. You know, and a lot of this has kind of come with 
building my own self-esteem, uh, when my self-esteem was lower, I was more willing to put myself in situations where I was uncomfortable or maybe just didn't belong. And as I've grown, you know, more confident, I've become a better advocate for myself. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to put up with this. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to. And say, I, I, the power of no, I say no and no, you know, no, no means no. I used to say yes a lot more. And now I know there are situations where I should say no. Uh, so that's another thing too, is I don't, you know, go to the fancy cocktail party that I know I'm really not going to enjoy. You know, I don't, you know, it, it's just, it's just being a lot, for me, a lot of it's being, you know, more true to myself and it's been really um, great and really empowering. Um, and I also want to say that I know it's, it's a privilege. It's a great privilege that I have that I can just take my mask off and just be, because, you know, there are people out there that have been commenting throughout the campaign saying that, you know, for whatever reason, safety, or maybe, you know, their parents have children, and they're worried about taking their mask off, or, and there's a lot of different reasons people have said they just feel like they can't or don't know how to take the mask off, um, and, you know, especially because of that, I think it's important that those of us, um, who can take the mask off, do take the mask off, uh, because, you know, the more of us who take the mask off, I think it will eventually hopefully make it easier for more people to take the mask off. And so maybe someday, you know, if enough of us take the mask off, everyone can take the mask off and, you know, just kind of share and bring awareness to this issue. So uh, anyway, those are just my thoughts uh, and my own personal coping strategies and just what I do to take the mask off and how I've been you know, working to take the mask off since uh, my own, you know, like I talked about in last week's video, uh, autistic self-discovery, autistic diagnosis. And you know, let me know if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Otherwise, I'll talk to you guys next week. See you later. Bye.